Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Movement for a Female-Led Society. I am T. Erica Patterson, the founder of our new Female-Led Society, and I will be initiating this transition toward a society that embraces and prefers the leadership of women. That is a female-led society. It's not led by feminine genitals. It's led by feminine principles. The 15 principles of feminine power are the guiding force for leadership in our new society. If you decide that you can follow them, you can hold them in your heart, then you can effectively become a leader regardless of your gender. A female-led society doesn't just represent women. It's not just advocating for women. The term female is is a symbol for all marginalized groups. People have been held back because of their race, because of their gender, their lack of gender identity, their sexuality. If you have not been able to participate fully in our society and give the gift of who you are and have it be respected without barriers being in place to keep you back, the female layer society represents you and advocates for you and embraces your leadership. So that is what we're doing. My main goal with organizing this movement is to initiate world peace. I truly believe that with the ideas that I have put into place and um, explained in the book called A Manifesto for a Female-Led Society, which is on sale on Amazon, you can go ahead and get it. Um, I believe that we will experience world peace if we put these ideas into action. I'm always open to, you know, compromising them or hearing, you know, stronger ideas or how to improve them. Definitely, you know, that's great. I don't like um, criticism without alternate suggestions, though. But if you have a suggestion for how to improve one of my ideas, I would love to hear it. I love to have these type of discussions where I usually can't because I don't have people in my life who are interested in the topic of how can we improve, improve this world. But I'm interested in it, and I'm deciding that I'm going to do something about it. Not only because of what we see in the news every day, but because of things we experience like today. I was doing my morning walk. I'm not really a big gym person, but I love to walk. And on my one of my many walks during the day, um, I take one in the morning. And as I'm walking, I decide to take a new route. And I'm walking and I'm enjoying it. I'm thinking all my thoughts out loud and just enjoying being out of my home and into a different atmosphere. And I see a man hop into the passenger side of a truck. And I see him pull his arm back and start punching and punching and punch. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just as I'm walking up. And I'm like, who is he hitting? And of course, when I look in the car, it's a woman. It's a black woman. She's not screaming. She's not hitting back. She's just taking his blows. So, of course, I start screaming immediately. I don't know why I feel like I'm such a vigilante. I'm supposed to be the superhero of the neighborhood. Once again, I run up and I'm like, stop hitting her. Stop hitting her. Call the police. Call the police. Because there are other people walking by and standing by. But everybody just look at me like, not my business. But I feel that it is my business. And I don't know why this young lady don't open her car door and get out. But she doesn't. And he's just standing there punching her and punching her. And I'm screaming, get out. Stop. Stop hitting her. Stop hitting her. Can somebody call the police? Because I I didn't realize I left my phone home. So that's why I couldn't do it myself. So he turns around and says to me, I'll beat your ass too. I was like, oh, no, you're not. So I go and run to the nearest store and I go inside. There's a, a the ma- manager I've encountered plenty of times before because it's a store in my neighborhood. And I said, could you please come help me? There's a man outside who's beating up a woman in the car. And he's like, okay, he comes out. As he's coming out, the police are coming up. I guess somebody did call him. The police are coming up. It's two different police cars. Then the third police car. And they get the guy out and they're questioning him. And he's, I don't know what he's saying. And finally, I just walk off and I feel very angry. Angry because in this day and age, men think that they should take all their their might and hit a woman. Angry because this woman stayed there when she could have got out of the car. Angry because I didn't have enough physical power to do anything physically physically about it to separate them. Angry because there are times in my past where I felt that I wish that somebody could have stepped in and said, stop doing that to her and nobody was there. 
angry because this man has seen me. This is my neighborhood. And he's like, I'm going to beat your ass too. And anytime he could find me, I'm by myself all the time here. Angry because there's nobody who cares if anything happens to me as I'm walking through this neighborhood or I'm living my life. I'm here alone in this experience. But I still stepped in to try to say, stop hurting this woman. And I always do that, putting myself in jeopardy, knowing that nobody has my back. If something were to happen to me, nobody would care. Nobody would do anything about it. People would probably care, but make a post or whatever, but not actively do something about it. So then I started to think as I continued to run my errands and, and um, walk back home, I started to think, well, things are going to be better in our new female-led society. This is gonna is not going to ever happen because it's explicit that violence against women and children is considered to be treason. It's a crime. It's a crime. It's a, the biggest crime that you can commit. What's going to happen to these men? There's not going to be a second chance. If you commit any crime, a violent crime against a woman or a child, that's it. You get the, mo- the, the most severe punishment ever. And there's no second chances. There's no rehabilitation. You need to understand that it is never okay to hit a woman, to be aggressive with the woman. To be aggressive with a child, to hit a child, to abuse any person, whatever rage and anger you got going on. If you think you could possibly hit a woman, then you need to go and see a light worker, which is the people who help with mental and psychological issues so they can help you work through it. There are resources available if you even think you might be angry enough to use aggression. And if you can't control that, you don't need to be a part of our society. One day. We won't have this issue. One day, women won't have to complain about being hurt by men. One day, men won't feel that it should be a natural reaction to hit a woman when they're frustrated. One day, men are going to feel so loved that all they will want to do is to love, love women, show love to women. Because any man who would dare hit a woman or try to abuse a woman or try to hurt a woman intentionally is only demonstrating that he's hurting. Why is he hurting? Maybe because he didn't get enough love from the mother in his life or from the women in his life. Maybe he was abused by them. Why was he abused by them? Because they were abused by someone else. And this is a cycle that keeps on going. And we have to stop the cycle of abuse by learning how to love each other and accept love and value love because a lot of people they've never been loved properly so they don't value someone being nice to them and caring for them they only value abuse we have a lot of mental reconditioning to do and there needs to be some examples set that this is not going to be tolerated abuse and violence against women and children is not going to be tolerated period there's nothing you can ever say To excuse that behavior. Women are to be protected. Women are to be cherished. Women are to be supported. Anything outside of those three things. You're doing it wrong. There's no competing with women. Women win. You make sure she wins. She'll make sure you and everyone else around you wins. Men don't understand that. They're taking out their frustrations. With their mother onto other women. For what? But we have to be responsible too. We have to teach women how to love. And we have to teach parents how to love their children too. Because this cycle of abuse won't stop until we decide that it's going to stop today. I look forward to our new female-led society where uh, violence and abuse against women will be non-existent. We'll live in peace. Every man you'll see, you'll feel happy to see them because you know that if you ever need anything, he's going to be there for you. If you ever need a smile, he's going to smile at you. If you ever need a hug, he's going to hug you. If you ever need help, he's going to help you because that is the role of men to be supportive to women. Imagine walking in the street and every man you meet, you don't feel fear. You don't feel like he's going to try to objectify you or ask you how much for the night or disrespect you. But he's there to help and serve you and to care for you. Imagine what kind of world. That sounds like a fantasy, right? 
But you know what? Sometimes dreams do come true. If you're interested in learning more about a female-led society, I am Tierica Patterson, the author of A Manifesto for a Female-Led Society, the founder of our new female-led society. Please do join us at femaleledsociety.org. Subscribe. Say hello on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. I can't wait to hear from you. I can't wait to, to, to stand with you. I can't wait to, to show appreciation for your partnership. Please stand with me. Let's create a society that empowers women. Let's create a society that induces world peace. We can do it. All right, guys. I'll talk to you soon.